Okay, so last time we talked about the render method, um, which is cool, but most of the time users want to interact with the application, so we're going to add a little bit of interaction. So right here we're going to add a button. Yes. The button. And if I flip over to my page, we can now see the button. When I click it, nothing happens. So most of the time if you have a button, your users are going to expect something to happen. So let's add that. So I'm going to add an on click, just like you would in traditional JavaScript. And that on click is going to need to call a method. And you just put the method, you don't put the method like this, you put the method like this. Because we're not calling the method, we're passing the method. Um, so now I have to go write a method up here called click. And we're going to do console.log, the button was clicked. So now if I save that and I toggle over to my code, clear out the console so this is easier to see. Okay. If I click the button, you can see the button is clicked. All right, so that's mildly interesting, but frequently what we want to do, um, well, Maybe not frequently, but sometimes we'll actually need to be able to get the event. So we can use the arrow function. So right here, I can put a function in place. This function is an anonymous function. It receives the event from the button, and then it's going to call click. But now, because this is actual, this is an actual function right here, I have to actually Call the clicked method. Um, and I can do other things. And one of the reasons why you might do this is you might need to call some like e.prevent uh, default. So you don't want the default behavior of the button to execute. So you can call e.prevent default. That will prevent things like forms from being submitted. So when you're writing a single page application client side, when the user pushes a button, you don't want it to submit back to the server. Instead, you want to do something on the client, this will prevent that from happening. So now let's go take a look at our code. If I push the button, you can still see it's calling the button was clicked. So that's good. It's doing what you'd expect. Um, it is also preventing the default behavior, which in this case there wasn't any default behavior, but um, it's available if we want it. Uh, there's another reason you might do something like this, which is you know ahead of time, or at this moment in time, what you want to pass to the function. Are you guys familiar with arrow functions? I should have asked that. No. Okay, so this is also new ES6 syntax. Any, if I want to create a function, I can do it. Um, <coughs> usually I would do it like this. Function um, test takes some param. Uh, arrow functions let me shorten that up just a little bit. So there's the same param part. This says I am a function, and then this is your function body. So these are equivalent more or less, um, with one exception. Arrow functions will bind the this to the calling context. So now this right here is going to be this guy right here. So that's one of the benefits you get of arrow functions. You'll frequently use them if you are calling things like map or reduce or an each. If you're iterating over collections, the arrow function can be really convenient. In this case, the arrow function is convenient because I don't want to type the function keyword right here. This is much shorter syntax. Um, I can pass something into here. The button was clicked, and I'm going to pass hello as the text. And then I can just take that. Um, oops. Pass the text. In. So now if I go and I execute this, push the button, you can see that the string that I provided when I click the button is the one that's getting passed and then logged out to the console. Okay, so that's a first, first step, but maybe I want that text, I don't want to show it in the console, that's not where most users look, I want to show it um, here in this thing. I want to show it in the output that I'm rendering to so now I can use state. So every React component 
has state. In this particular instance, our state starts out empty. Um, so let's add some. I can add a constructor. Oops. So the first thing I need to do when I write my constructor is type super so that it lets the base class be initialized. Sort of. As much as it, that happens in JavaScript. Um, the next thing I can do is configure my initial state. So I can do this.state equals some object. Um, let's add a value to our state, call it text, and then let's just call this initial text. So now when I render my output right here, I can just say this.state dot and I should get initial text as my output. Let's go confirm that. Refresh this. Um, and it looks like I've got an error. No. I'm done. You don't put this when you call super. That's my bad. Um, OK. So you can see there's my initial text right there. Now what we're going to change this to do is when I push the button, let's change that text. All right. So. We've clicked, we've passed hello. So inside of here, I can call this dot set, set state, and I can provide it with an object. And I'm going to change text to be that new text that we received. So now when I push the button, it changed to hello. Notice that I didn't have to tell the page. I didn't have to go in and say, find this DOM element and change its value. I didn't have to tell the page that something changed. React does all of that for me. And the way that that works is every component has state. If that state changes, the component will automatically re-render because it says, I have some new values. I should do something with that. And the something that it does, the side effect, is that it will render. So set state will automatically cause things to re-render. There are a couple of ways that you can make your component re-render. Set state is one. Um, another one is to call force update. So if you wanted, you could not change it. I think it's just this.force update. And that will just make the component re-render. So now when I click the button, it'll re-render, but you won't see anything happen. So let's put a console log right here. Okay, so you can see it output rendering the first time it rendered. And now every time I push the button, it's rendering again and again and again. So that's because I called force update. You almost never, in fact, I don't think I've ever used force update. I just don't have a reason to. Um, most of the time, this is just going to happen magically for you, but if you ever need it, it's available. Okay, so any questions about how that might work? Okay, so now let's take this a, one step further and let's put an input right here. Okay, so now I have an input with type equals text. Should get shown right here. If I put in some text though, we don't do anything with it. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this rendering because that'll make us crazy. Okay, so I need a way to be able to get the data out of this input. So I have to put a ref on it. That's how React lets you interact with the elements on your page, how you get values out of them. So we're gonna call this text box for lack of a better. Thing. And now Instead of setting the state this way, let's grab what's in that text box. So I can do this dot refs dot text box dot val, I believe is still in there. Do that. We'll test it. I'm not entirely sure that's the thing. Okay, I'll refresh this. And now there's something there. I'm gonna push the button. And it's not good. It's just an attribute. Or is it value? Used to be 
that my money is. I think it's that. Well, we caused it to re-render, but we did not detect it. So, our source is two, two, one. The break time outline. Push the button. This type refs dot text box. Oh, it's value. Okay, um, this is something else they changed in a recent version of React. The this.refs.textbox I think used to refer to a component and now it gives you the DOM element. So these are just gonna be straight, um, just as if you were interacting with any other DOM element. And so you can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's really cool. So that should be value. Let's try this again. There we go. So see now it is pushing the button, changes the state to whatever I put in the text box, and that's what the kid is. Okay. So does that make sense? That's how you get a hold of data out of your React component. So anytime you're writing a form, this is how you handle it. Okay. Uh, let's stop there.